This is a small portion of the machine out of Berea Tower. Uh, this was GRS's last pistol grip. This was made in 1930. It was the last model of pistol grip they made. Of course, this is just a very small portion of the machine out of Berea. And we've got it hitched up here to this semaphore and to this Type G signal, which is off the New York Central. And uh, get the semaphore going here. We've got it hitched up in the series, so when this one goes yellow, this one go green. And of course we can bring this one on up to green. Our goal here was to save uh, some of the styles of interlockings out of the towers, since the towers are all gone, and to save some of the signal models, which the railroads are no longer putting in. The oldest one in here, of course, is the semaphore. And this is the Type G, which is the New York Sentinel standard and was adopted by Conrail as their standard. Uh, but when Conrail was broken up 10 years ago, the railroads all decided to go to the Type D, which is like the CNO. And uh, so that's the style they've adopted now. So they're not putting any of these styles of signals in anymore. Over here, we have a portion of the machine out of Sterling, Ohio. Sterling is up near Whitman and Wadsworth, where the main line of the B&O across the area. This is about a third of the machine out of Sterling. We didn't have room for all of it. And we've got it hitched up to this searchlight signal. Over here, so you can the signal better. Uh, the searchlight signal is a very good, successful signal. There's still thousands of them in use, but the railroads are no longer putting them in service new because of the maintenance of the moving lenses. There's lenses in there that move that change the color. Yellow. And there's the grain. Of course, the approach and the clear on the railroad. And the little short dwarf signal here on the floor is very common. There's still lots of those and still being put in new. I think I can get this machine over for the dwarf here. I can come out of the siding or something. There's a restricting on a dwarf to come out of the siding. This signal over here is a B&O color position signal. There were three railroads that had color position, actually four if you count the GMO. Uh, the B&O had their color position, the N and W, the old original N and W, had their color position, and then the Pansy had just the position light signal without color in it, but that's a B&O color position dwarf. When it's green, the two green ones are like this. You've not got it hooked up now. It's too hard to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fails too many times. Over here, uh, this machine was made by Union Switch and Signal. This is called an S8 unit lever machine. These pistol grips hang upside down. And we've got it hitched up to this interlocking. This machine came out of Warsaw, Indiana, where the New York Central crossed the Pennsylvania Main Line, the Fort Wayne Line. Uh, we were donated the model board from New Paris, Ohio, and so since they were both Pensy, we've sort of made this machine into New Paris. This is New Paris, Ohio, right on the Indiana line, where the Pensy main line uh, went into Indiana going west, which is to the left on there. So let's see, the top of that board then would have been north. Yeah, and this is east to Bradford, and this is east to Dayton. Every number on the model board, which is called a function, every function up here which has a number, whether it's a switch or a signal, matches a number on the lever, and that's how you work your interlock. So we've got nine in reverse, and reverse is a diverging movement, normal straight through. We've got nine lever in reverse, because nine controls this switch. So if we're going to run the passion train, let's say the spirit of St. Louis, run it towards Dayton, from Indianapolis, it goes this way. We need two signals. We need 10 to the right, and we need 20 to the right to get it through. So we'll pull 10 signal, and we'll pull 20, and there we've got the two signals for the passion train to go through eastbound from Indianapolis to Dayton. And the Pensy Dwarf we've got. And down here we have a Pensy Dwarf signal. That's on clear. The two lights straight up and down is clear, and 
straight across like that is stop. If I take that signal away, we can take the approach. That's the same as a yellow. That's an approach signal. And then we also have a restricting signal, which you have to push the button to get. That's the restricting. <laughs> This is a New York Central Dwarf signal from Ridgeway. <coughs> this was on a mechanical plant. This dwarf was a pipeline connected to the tower, so all it had was stop and restricting to come out of the site. We've not figured out a way to hitch it up to this to make it work. Over here we have an Armstrong lever. At one time, the tires were all like this. All the tires in the United States had Armstrong levers. They were mechanically connected to pipelines that ran along the edge of the track and little rollers and uh, switch the switches that way mechanically. And this was an Armstrong lever. There'd be rows of these in the tower. Over here we have the board from Faustoria. This is like from 1950 when this uh, electric interlocking system was installed by GRS in Faustoria. And that's the, the layout of the junction at Faustoria. This was called an entrance exit machine made by JRS. You could push the button where your train was coming into the plant and push the button where it was going out and everything else in between lined up automatically. That's what they could do in 1950. Up here we have the model board from Dunkirk, Ohio. Dunkirk's a little town 60 mile northwest of here where the Fort Wayne Pensy Main Line crosses the New York Central Line from Plumas to Toledo to TNC. We managed to get that board from Dunkirk. Over here, this is the newest board in here. Uh, this was made about 1975. This is downtown Columbus. After all the tires around Columbus Union Station closed, this board was made by uh, JRS. And uh, this is downtown Columbus. High Street goes over right here. The convention center is on either side here, and there's a walkway today over the tracks between the two convention centers and Columbus. This is the Pensy Main Line going out the north side of Bradford, going out the south side of London to Dayton that way. Coming up here, this is the New York Central going to Cleveland. This is the Pensy going to Cleveland, known as the CNC. And this is the four track main line, the CN division of the BO, the Pensy and B and O joint operation going to Newark, Ohio. The main line going east out of Columbus. This the, machine was it in High Street? No, this machine was after High Street was closed, and there was a trailer put over here called Grant, and it lasted one year. This machine was in the trailer called Grant for one year until it was closed, and then remoted from Scioto Tower, and then finally from Scioto Tower to the dispatcher. This was the last of the modern CTC boards still made in hardware. The last that they did. Uh, too much trouble every time they made a change to engrave the boards and change the tracks. That's all on TV screens now. Like a computer, but still remote control. This is the CNO main line right outside our depot here at Marion. On this board, we are right here. This is the former New York Central area crossing. Here's AC Tower that we moved over on this side, and the depot's right here in this corner is where we're at. This is the former CNO main line right outside the windows of the depot, how it used to be back in the days when it was all double track with the center sidings. And this board was controlled from MD Tower, which is up the line here about a mile. This is Wallbridge Tower in Toledo. This is the Pensy Main Line up into Toledo. This is the Toledo Terminal Belt Line around Toledo. And this is the CNO Main Line from Columbus up into Toledo where it connects to the Toledo Terminal or on down to the water level. Over here is the little board from the tower at Mount Vernon, MN Tower. Uh, this is the Pensy Main Line from Columbus to Cleveland, known as the CANC. Uh, this was just the connecting track for the interchange track that swung around to the B&O. And the B&O branch line from uh, Newark up to Willard and Sandusky.